How does my voice work? What is happening when I sing? How does my voice create sound? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go over the three vocal mechanisms that help you create sound. I'm T.L. Baker, vocal instructor and performing artist. Like and subscribe to my channel. There are three systems at play when you go to create sound. The breathing mechanism, the sound producing mechanism, and the word producing mechanisms. So we have the breathing mechanism, which is your respiratory system, your sound producing mechanism, which are your vocal cords or your vocal folds, and your word producing mechanisms, which are your lips, your teeth, <laughs> your soft palate, your tongue, and your sinuses or your resonators. These systems work together to create a quality of sound and every voice is unique because the timbre of your voice is a result of how you use the three mechanisms. Is there relaxation occurring or are you tense? Like when I tighten up my body, you can hear how it affects my voice. So it's how we use and manipulate these systems that affects our voice and creates the specific timbre of sound. Let's talk about the first system, shall we? The breathing mechanism. So we have our lungs that are protected by your rib cage. And your lungs are not muscles, they're organs. So they need the muscles surrounding them to help them expand and contract. And when you inhale, your diaphragm, which is a muscle just below your ribs, it descends when you inhale, allowing for the lungs to expand. And the muscles are in between the ribs also help inflate the lungs. So the breathing mechanism, you inhale, the ribs open and the diaphragm descends, creating more space in this cavity. So really holding open your ribs is a great way to expand your lungs. And I have a little tip. So you don't want to breathe as if you were breathing up. A lot of us go when we go to breathe. That's a no. Don't do that. So here's a little, a little exercise for you. So give yourself a hug. Mm, I love myself. <laughs> okay, and then make sure your shoulders are down and that you're pulling your elbows towards your spine, okay? So now I want you to breathe in through a straw, sip the air, and let the breath go below the elbows into the belly. So you're gonna breathe in through the straw and your chest is not gonna rise, your belly is gonna inflate, and then exhale, blow out the candles. This is what I do not wanna see. Nope, you want the air to go into right here, okay? You can also put your fingers here and push in towards the spine, and when I inhale, the belly is gonna push out. But this is a really great way to isolate the breath and have it go down. There are three actions. There is the inhale, the exhalation, the release of the breath. And then you repeat on the inhale and then the exhale, the vocal folds come together when you decide to make sound and then the release. So making sure that you release at the end of a phrase and not carry over any kind of breath tension into the next phrase is a great singing tip. When you're breathing, you don't know how breath actually works in your thoughtful brain. Um, because when you're born, you just naturally, instinctually know how to breathe and you know how to make sound. And your heart pumps and you digest food. Like you don't know thoughtfully. You haven't learned how that works. And so when we go to breathe, a lot of weird stuff happens because it, we just do it automatically. But it's something you can manually manipulate as well. So when you breathe, gently breathe in through the straw and exhale on a hiss. So try and breathe as long as you can on an inhale. Exhale on a hiss. Go as long as you can and at the bottom of the breath, which is when you're empty, you take a nice straw breath in and you expand as if you were like pushing out against the walls of your ribs to try and expand. The sound producing mechanism. It's also called phonation. Brrring, hello. Yes, just like the telephone, which means 
the creation of sound. So what happens are your vocal folds, and I'll show a little picture here, are housed right here. If you put your hands on your throat and hum, hmm, you can feel the vibrations. You can also swallow, and you can feel how your larynx, which is this space right here, moves up and down, okay? So your larynx tilts like this because it needs to be able to grab the saliva and bring it down into, right, down your esophagus. So when you sing, your larynx can lift. I don't know if you can like lift and curl your throat and make funny, <laughs> you can make funny noises, right? You can also like lower your throat and like make your voice sound like this, right? Yeah. So a neutral throat is what you want. Um, but also you can think of tilting the larynx down ever so slightly. I'm gonna sing with a low larynx. Now I'm gonna sing with a high larynx. <laughs> Back to phonation. Bring, hello, you're getting off topic, TL. <laughs> it's all relevant though. So phonation, that, what is that? That's the creation of sound using your vocal folds, AKA your vocal cords. So when you exhale, and decide to create sound, your vocal folds get sucked together and they wave like this. And that's actually how sound is created. Sound moves in waves like this, sound waves. And the higher the pitch, the faster the vocal folds vibrate and they actually start to squish. So the higher notes, the vocal folds squish up a little bit and then as the lower notes, the vocal folds stretch out. So your anatomical vocal fold shape does affect your voice. And that's why some women have lower voices, their vocal folds are a little bit longer, and some women have super short vocal folds, which makes their voice higher. Having the proper closure on your vocal folds is super important. Like, when your vocal folds don't close all the way, it's a breathy sound. And if there's too much tension, ah, uh, then like you can damage your voice and get vocal nodules. Not recommended. So a good exercise for this, the glottal exercise. I want everybody to go, ah, 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 like you're saying, no, 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 ah, ah, ah. Let's go ahead, ah, ah, ah. So that is a glottal. It's the closing and the opening of the vocal folds. Ah, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. Now do it with your lips closed. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I like to go. And I have a vocal warm up, and it's a linked right here. If you'd like to try that, and you can use the glottal closures on that. We've talked about the first two mechanisms, right? The breathing mechanism and the sound producing mechanism. So a great way to get these two systems working in harmony together is to lay down on your back and feel these mechanisms vibrate together and in a very relaxed way. So what I like to do is place my hands in my diaphragm which is just below your sternum, your hard chest plate, and, and it's in between your belly button and your sternum. So, shh. If you give a nice shush, you can feel it kick. Shh, shh. That's your diaphragm. And so you breathe in through a straw when you're laying on your back. And then exhale on a hum. Mm -hmm. And then when you're out of air, you repeat. When you breathe in, you feel the diaphragm pushing up towards the ceiling like you're fl inflating a balloon. Mm, and you feel this space like nice and big and round. Mm, you feel your whole head with the vibration. You can also breathe in through your nose. Mm. So this helps connect the breath with the vocal folds 
and you want to put your voice in your mask, which are the resonators or your sinuses. We are now getting to the word producing mechanism. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tip of the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tip of the tip of the tongue, which is a great exercise for articulation which is very important when singing because it's all about the story. And if you can't understand the story, then why are we here? Resonation. Resonation is the sound waves hitting on the walls of your body as it exhales through the system, through your body. And so when someone has a really bright voice, that means their voice is really far forward in their face. They call it like placement and the sound actually vibrates to the bones in the front of your face. And that's what gives it mm, that brightness. It's because your sound is like going this way in the front of your face. And you wanna balance that with your soft palate. So put the tip of your tongue behind your top teeth on the roof of your mouth. It's hard, that's your hard palate. Now slide your tongue all the way to the back of your mouth and you can feel your soft palate. Now yawn and really open up your soft palate in the back. Exhale, sigh. Oh, oh. And sometimes it turns into a real one. Oh. Excuse me, but that, your ear, nose, and throat are all interconnected. That's why they're called an ENT, ear, nose, and throat doctor, because all of these passageways are interconnected. So I highly recommend connecting with your soft palate and doing some yawn exercises. So do you have any questions about what we're talking about today? Like what do you mean when you mean resonance? Or are you curious to know more about vocal pedagogy and how the voice works and how to create sound? Go ahead and drop me a comment if you have any questions. Thanks so much, I'm TL Baker, like and subscribe. Have a beautiful day and happy singing everyone.